So greetings from Pennsylvania once again. And as you can tell by the title of the video, we're here at what is considered to be the oldest house or oldest structure here in Pennsylvania. The lower Swedish cabin. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, so here's a quick overlook of the area. There is the old cabin. Looks like a little building up there. Looks like the ruins of something back there. Beautiful spot down here. Considering where we are, there's a nice little river down there stream. We're in the outskirts of Philadelphia, actually. We're just about 10 miles north of the Philly airport. Wouldn't necessarily notice, know it by looking at where we are. Yeah, so this is in the town of Drexel Hill, you know, just in the outskirts of Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, getting here was a little difficult, um, but once, when, when you're on what's called Vermont Avenue, there are signs leading you to the cabin. Otherwise, it might be a little bit difficult to find it because you get into a situation where the, the streets aren't named. I mean, they have names, but the signs aren't up for it. So thankfully, I was looking for a certain street and I couldn't find it. And I saw signs pointing to the Swedish cabin. There was multiple signs, so it was easy to find it, which I'm thankful for. Like I said before, outskirts of Philly or in Philly itself is not my favorite place to drive and explore. But for this, we will do it. Also, I have channel sticker number 22 that we're going to place out here somewhere. i got to find a spot. And i got at least one picture to share with you of someone who's found uh, channel sticker number 18. All right, I'll, we'll look around a little bit more and I'll, I'll, I'll yap a little bit about the history of this and how old it is and things like that. Pretty cool. Oldest house in Pennsylvania. Yeah, so pretty awesome place. Got the old wooden shingles, which are not original, but they've been replaced. But yeah, some restoration work was done to this place. I think uh, folks lived here until 1937, when the place was abandoned and suffered some even some vandalism. You can't really see in there a whole lot. And then in 1987, it was. Restored. The beautiful building. Yeah, right by the right by the creek. Beautiful place to live. But I'm sure it floods here occasionally. Yeah, so the date of this cabin is roughly 1640. They don't know exactly when it was built, but um, the Swedes came to Pennsylvania starting in 1638 and they continued immigrating to this area into maybe the 1670s at least um, but this part of Pennsylvania was once part of what's called New Sweden it was a colony of Sweden it's kind of you know they were the first people to actually colonize Pennsylvania on a on a decent scale and it was it was New Sweden there's the, the capital of New Sweden was just it's not too far from here along the Delaware River in Philadelphia. I think it's a park right now. There was like a, a a mansion there and everything where the governor lived. Kind of an interesting history that you don't hear a whole lot about anymore these days. I always think of Pennsylvania being, you know, started by William Penn, you know, an, an English colony, but it was originally, uh, at least down the Philly area in this area, was a colony of Sweden. So giving it a date of 1640 is kind of an estimate. It's a good estimate. Um, and the Swedish colony, it was part of Pennsylvania, Upper Delaware, and New Jersey as well, those parts. And it was a colony from 1638 until 1655 when the Dutch took over. There was some war between the Dutch and the Swedish over in Europe, and the Swedish lost control of this area. There actually was a few little battles here or down in the state of Delaware, near the town of Christiana. I think the Swedes gained control again at some point. There's a whole history of that. But eventually, uh, even the Dutch lost control to the English. And Pennsylvania and the whole area became an English colony then. But not until the late 1670s, 1680s. I forget the exact date. Yeah, the Swedes were here first. And the Swedes are known for building log cabins. All right, let's walk around a little bit more. i got to find a place to hide that channel sticker too. Not sure if this building up here is original. Like I said, there was some restoration done. Got 
guess that's the spring house. But you can see there's a remains of a building back here. The old stonework. Not sure what this was, but let's uh, take a closer look. This one's got like a ladder in there. Yeah, not sure what this was. I'm assuming it was a later addition to the site. Maybe. Actually, let's go back here. I'm gonna quick just explore a little bit around here. All right, didn't really find anything else back there. Might be a good place to hide the channel sticker. Yeah, lovely place down here. Not so much up in town. Town seemed a little bit uh, run down. I feel like there might have been something here on this end too. Two fireplaces in there looks like. Yeah, I guess on Sundays you can actually come inside. Go inside this place, but not today. Let's see if we can look in over here. There's much of a glare. I'm not sure much you can see in there. You can see me. Not so much inside. Let's try over here. I guess you can see a little bit of there. Looks like it got some stuff set up. All right, so channel sticker location found. Of course, there's the cabin. Here's like a little flagpole. There's kind of information board right there. And there's some rocks. 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 And in f kind of in front, there's some right here. There's, there's a stack of three right here. Well, not really a stack, but I'm going to stick the channel sticker under this one right here. All right, so if you want to come looking for it, right there it is under that one. It's a little heavy, but you can pick it up. And as always with these channel stickers, if you are the one that finds it, if you could send me a picture of you finding it with, of yourself or whoever's with you, I do, I do enjoy sharing that picture later on in a future video. And speaking of which, I, need to, I do need to share a picture. A channel sticker, that, this is number 22, but number 18 was found. That was the one I placed the Maryland High Point, Backbone, Backbone Mountain, on my trip down to West Virginia some, several weeks ago. So let me share that picture. I forget the guy's name, I think it was Eric. I think his name was Eric. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, sorry. But uh, he went up the, the day after I posted the video. He went up there early that morning, and he, he claimed it. Several other people went looking for it. So let me show you, share that picture with you. And as of today, the filming of this video, uh, channel sticker number 19, uh, that video has been uploaded. That was the one I placed at the high point of West Virginia. Today is July 2nd. Uh, I uploaded that video several days ago. So. As of today, Friday, July 2nd, no one has said anything to me that they found it. Um, which isn't surprising. That one's, that's the furthest one away that I've placed. But uh, this, this is the weekend coming up, so maybe someone will go out this weekend looking for it, hopefully. So, but I haven't heard from anybody yet. Maybe I will later. All right, and of course, stickers 20 and 21 are out there too, which you'll see, which you've probably seen already. All right, I'm gonna walk around just a little bit more and we'll check out the creek a little bit here. And this, this spot's pretty cool, actually, the old, the old cabin. I haven't said it yet, but I'll say it now, you know. I, I could totally live at this spot. Like I said, not so much up in town, but down here, not too bad. Yeah, so just a little slice of heaven down here. Not too far from Philadelphia. Um, I believe this is the Darby Creek. Oh, look, there's some old, there's an old wall up there. Foundations of something, I just noticed. A lot of history along here. Yeah, man, if you lived, yeah, you could come down to the creek every day. You'd be you're sleeping up there in the house. You could have the window open. You could hear the sound of the creek as you slept. That'd be awesome. There is one other house up that way, but it looks like it's lived in, maybe. Yeah, so there, the road kind of continues on up this way. I think you can walk or ride your bike back here. I believe this trail has a name. I don't know what it is offhand. I just talked to a guy who was out here fishing. Yeah, I think he, there's a trail that goes that way. Yeah, but beautiful spot down here.
yeah, it goes on. And here's looking back down the other way. I should mention, this is called Creek Road. But if you go on Google Maps and type in Lower Swedish Cabin, <laughs> right here, that word right there, Lower Swedish Cabin, it'll show you right where it is. But the only remaining log cabin of its type among several located on Darby Creek. Ev evidently built by Swedish settlers who came to this area after 1638, uh, used by a filmmaker. That I've read is, um, might not actually be true from what I've researched. Some people think he did, but others are saying they didn't. And evidently built by Swedish settlers, it, it, it was built by Swedish settlers. Not sure why it says evidently. But that's the way it is with history. When you research history, people come up with different things. So I'm not really sure if a movie was made here or not. Like I said, some of my research said that that's not true. And I'm not sure why it says evidently built by Swedish settlers. It was built by Swedish settlers. So right back there it is. All right, I might take just a little bit more look again and then we're gonna head on our way. Kind of one of these spots where this is what you come to see. And that's kind of it then. Yeah, so once again, there she is. Beautiful old cabin. Go up and touch the old logs. Only from the 1640s. I mean, this this stuff here is probably new, restored when they fix it up. But the logs are original. They just have that look. All right, beautiful old place. Looks like there is an upstairs too. That's where my bedroom would be. Like I said, now I had the window open so I could hear the sound of the stream down there, Darby Creek. All right, so I think that'll be it for this video. Nothing else extremely historic happened here. But if you want to research more of the history of the Swedish here in Pennsylvania in this area, it is kind of interesting. There's more I could have said in this video, but you can obviously research that yourself too. But yeah, it's a quaint little spot, beautiful little spot here in what might otherwise not be the most beautiful spot in Pennsylvania. Just saying, I'm not really a city person. All right, but speaking of city, I am going to, I need to get back out into the outskirts of Philly. We're going to try to head to Fort Mifflin next, down along the Delaware River. And hopefully, hopefully I'll see you there. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you around.